First of all, I would like to welcome you all, my dear friends, in the E classes of Human Rights. Today, we are going to discuss something about the International Covenant on Economic, Social, Cultural Rights, 1966, which may be abbreviated as International Covenant on Economic, Social, Cultural Rights, 1966. This international covenant especially is one of many extensions clarifications reaffirmations considerations recognitions realizations and a specification of the social economic cultural rights as declared in the charter of united nations and the universal declaration of human rights 1948 which most specifically is an important instrument document for the human rights and its enforcement the international covenant on economic social and cultural rights 1966 which was enforced on 3rd of january 1976 according to its article 27 by the resolution Double two double zero A twenty one dated on sixteenth of December nineteen sixty six of United Nations General Assembly, and India has ratified on tenth of April nineteen seventy nine. This covenant has thirty one articles and five parts, which are briefly. I would like to tell you. with the purposes of convenient study in the light of its objectives first is the preamble has been mentioned in this covenant second thing is that the general provisions under articles 1 to 5 the provisions relating to substantive rights namely economic social cultural human rights under article 6 to 15 fourth is that the implementation or enforcement of rights under article 16 to 25 last and fifth is that the miscellaneous provisions under articles 26 to 31 now we would like to discuss something about the preamble in simple language to understand The preamble of this covenant is similar to the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights 1966. But up to a specific limit this covenant is considered the economic social cultural rights as placed in the UN charter and also in UDHR namely the Universal Declaration of Human Rights 1948 and also provide the recognition of the human rights which are inherent and inalienable as a foundation it also recognized the human rights which derive from the dignity of individuals inherently the obligation the obligation of the state parties have been considered under the un charter for the promotion respect universally and observance for human rights and freedoms the duties of the persons individually have also been realized towards the other persons individually and the community this is the preamble of international covenant on economic social cultural rights 1966 now we are going to talking something about the brief aspect relating to general provisions which have been placed under article 1 to 5 of this covenant the general provisions of this international instrument were contained in the part 1 and part 2 the article 1 is related to the right of self determination responsibilities of the state parties and other connected things article 2 is in respect of the undertaking of states parties for the realization of the recognized right under this covenant and the guarantee of the human rights without any kind of discrimination article 
is with regard to the undertakings of the state's members for ensuring the equal rights of men and women. Article 4 shows that the state members may impose the limitations on the rights by making laws for the promotion of the welfare of democratic setup. Article 5 is in connection with the interpretation of construction of this covenant which may not be in the destruction of this covenant. Now my defense, the human rights mean economic human rights, social human rights, cultural human rights. We will discuss in next coming video. So my defense, if you like this video, then please subscribe it, like it, share it and also please give your comments as feedback to us and also please keep watching our youtube channel thank you so much